So that maze of modules. What you're seeing there would be the kitchen, dining room, living room area. Above it would be the two bedrooms. Whereas here, you've got two bedrooms on one level, like two modules on one level. So you've got one going this way, and then the other one you can't see it going behind, but you can see it over there. So there's the mirror image over there, where you see the solarium. Mm -hmm. So that's the, the two bedrooms. I think this is a, just a very nice common ground between living in the suburbs, living in the city. So this is all public space? And yeah. Oh, there's tables. Well, that belongs yeah. to the people there that have a one module okay. studio, but they don't have their own private terrace, so they're just using this one. Okay. And you get the perfect wave. Oh, wow. You Google perfect wave and you come to Habitat. Oh. It's uh, stones in the, in the riverbed and, and, and the people like it because it's a constant wave. So they come here to train. And beyond you're seeing our wonderful uh, Victoria Bridge built in 1860. See these little details with the the window outside your front door, just to give you another view. Moishe, he, he's, he's very strong on, um, well, his, if you read his material, the, the word uh, three-dimensional will often come up. And so as opposed to a flat wall, he wants this openness. And with that openness concept, you get the, the, these beautiful views as we walk through. It does have this feeling of suburbs meets the city. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's a huge garden there. Now there's the terrace. So that's somebody's front door there. So your guests, when they're arriving, walk onto this huge terrace like you see here. Pretty spectacular. Under there is where you have the kitchen. That other window is the dining room, and this okay. other one is the uh, living room. But don't forget, on the other side, you've got all the windows going out towards the, the port. Moshe, it was part of Moshe's plan that there would be views. He tries to avoid having a, a solid structure. And so even though you have a massive structure, it's still that concept of uh, openness. I'm disappearing back into the sixth floor. You know, like it, it see through. Three dimensional is a very important concept for Moshe. If you look at the front of them on Pierre Dupree Avenue, you don't see a straight wall. It's undulating. And you've got all these holes. Having something that's not traditional, something that's very special. You know? You know, the, um, when uh, Moshe was doing his drawings, <clears throat> he was looking for a structure in which he could insert the uh, residential quarters. So he toyed around with the idea of a pyramid or a sphere. Okay, so he, and then he would insert. Instead, he came up with this, and he, he does say in one of his uh, interviews, he did use Lego. And a few years ago, we actually won a contest. What did people want to have as the next Lego project? and Habitat 1. But he did play around with Lego and came up. So here you see you've got the gradual incline, so kind of a concept of a pyramid. You've got in, you know, inward. You've got 50 apartments on the second level. You've got 32 on the, on the up level. So as you go up, you get fewer and fewer. So you've got this concept of a, of a pyramid, but the modules, they became, his, his trick was the modules became the structure. So each one of the apartments is made up of modules. And each one of the modules is the same size in square feet. 
we have 354 of these modules. And these 354 make up either what we call a, a studio apartment, one, one module apartment, or a, a two bedroom apartment, two modules, three bedroom apartment, three modules. Je vais vous dire à Benoît, tu es vite sur les patins, mais je vois que c'est lui. You've got some interesting pictures of uh, how the building was constructed. There's the trucks that was moving the modules. There's you got the framing. See? Everything, that's what was part of the big expense, is everything had to be specially made to, to do the construction. It wasn't as though you can go to some hardware store and say, okay, I want this piece of equipment. On that picture, there's a module that's, that's being picked up. And then they would move them in place. And you see how they were hoisted? So this would be a place here for the, another module to sit in. So the weight on these must have been incredible with all this oh, yeah. concrete, right? There was an engineer named uh, Commandant, August Commandant. And he was instrumental in getting this place built. He had um, done a lot of post-World War II work on reconstructing bridges. And so when you see these walkways upstairs, they're bridges. The, a bridge is made of many segments. And then each segment is a U, like two U's. So it makes a tunnel. The modules and the bridges. You see now, you see one of the bridges with the four segments. You got four segments. That's the longest bridge. So the bridge, the elevator towers, the stairwells, the modules themselves, they are the structure. He didn't need a pyramid. He created one with his pieces. So we're going up to uh, Moshe Safdie's apartment. And the elevator doesn't stop on all the floors. And that's because when you go on a level, you have a choice of going into your residence on that level, or going down some stairs, or going up some stairs. OK. Excuse me. Now you're going to get better views outside here. When uh, my wife and I moved in here, we've been waiting for five years to get into this place. And we said when they called us that we we're going to come, we're going to be real difficult customers. We're not going to just take anything. So there's um, two units here normally. One residence there, one residence there. And I'll show you when we go inside where there should be a wall. Like we opened the front door of, of you know, our apartment at that time. We kind of just melt it, you know. They was trying, how do we contain our joy? How do we not show how happy we are that we'll pay any price to move in here? We had so much light. So we came in and, you know, in the month of April, it's beautiful sunshine like this. So how can you, how can you not like the place? views all over. And that's another thing, when you, when you live at Habitat, you're not buying a chunk of real estate with a limited view. You're in an apartment where you've got your kitchen, dining room, living room, normally, here, and above going the other direction, perpendicular, are your two bedrooms. So that means that, do you see the view we have here? So we have views on two sides, right? Mm -hmm. And when we go upstairs, You've got views on three sides. So you've got two very obvious things that are habitat looks. The floor, which is going all in the same direction. In the 60s, when apartments were built, they would take tiling about this size, square. So that square would be crisscross, criss you know, like going, going in one direction, going in the other. But here, they all go in the same line. Another thing that's a habitat look is this in and out pattern. So you have your ceiling coming down. It meets a belt that goes all the way around the module. You have the same belt under the floor. This, the construction is, it's a construction of modules. So each one of the modules is structural. So you have this extra concrete up here, and you also have it on the floor, but you don't see it. But we'll see it later when we go outside, because you'll see there's a line around underneath the windows. And that's where your concrete is double the thickness of the walls. 
So here's, when you look at the walls here, you can see that's the normal thickness. But up here, you've got double that. And you've got other areas where the wall is thicker because it's part of the construction. How large is the footprint in each module? Yeah. About, it's close enough, it's 600 square feet. We have 20 floor plans. So there is repetition. This one should be a mirror image of that over there. It's not because this is a special unit for reception. So the window here is about the same size as the window over there. But because this was the reception area during Expo, they took what would have been two two bedroom apartments and they made one residence out of it. So from where you are to those doors, that would be one module. Originally this would, well not originally this one, but typically this would be a two module residence, approximately 1200 square feet on two levels. So this one would be the module used for your kitchen, dining room, living room, and the module above would be the two bedrooms. In this particular place, they created this cathedral ceiling type effect, but normally there would be a bedroom there. It, it's, 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 they call it brutalist architecture, but it's not. It's, it liked, <laughs> it's very airy. You know, one of the things I like about Habitat is that they built this with quality materials, but not extravagant. A lot of this stuff is uh, locally available. It's not imports from Europe. Some people still have the original uh, hardware in their bathrooms. And um, if, we can get, if American standards can give us the piece, they'll send us the piece. So now we have a view like we could have downstairs from this bedroom, which is no longer a bedroom. This is a feature up there too, this glass to let light through. So what you have to understand is this has been configured specially for the reception area. The lighting for the room, there it is. So Moshe was keen on indirect lighting. So this is very, very practical. You know, you open a closet, you can easily see your clothes, but at the same time, when the closet is closed, it lights up the room. It's really, it works. So in there you, we have 60 to 100 watts. It does a good job of lighting your room. So you don't have these hanging chandeliers or something, you know, that you saw in the 50s from the ceiling. And this is the first time you're seeing one of the molded bathrooms. These the famous fiberglass bathrooms. They would drop the bathrooms in and then pour the cement for the roof. This, so all this is molded. As you've seen in the last 10, 15 years where you've, you can go to a hardware store and you can buy a molded bathroom. Um, so he was ahead of his time, fiberglass. And these are original, by the way, faucets. And very practical because um, although this floor is slightly different, but there was a, this type of a rubbery floor. So easy to clean. Come in with your hose and... <laughs> <laughs> Why not the bathroom? Remember we came in and we were going this way, out towards the river. Once we came upstairs, we're going another direction. We have a crisscross effect. This is why you're getting different views from what you got downstairs. This is why I was saying to you, this is so different from buying a condo where you're buying a limited view. You've got right. views on three sides. That's right. And sometimes if your front door is well situated, you've got room on four sides. Okay, so this a more typical closet. So you've got the lighting coming out. Very, very effective. Another thing too, anybody who's familiar with con construction in the 60s will appreciate the quality of the finishing. Th these, like, they feel good. Huh? Yeah. Now I'm going to show you a typical bedroom. This is really what Habitat is all about. This is normal for you to have a bedroom and have a big window like this. Your lighting is coming from the closet. And I'm going to draw your attention to the baseboard that's sunken into the wall. Instead of having your baseboard on top of your plasterboard, they went through the extra trouble of inserting the baseboard so it was flush. And your electricals, instead of being in your wall, your wall stays nice and clean, your electricals are running along the ground. It's just, uh, I just like the consistency and simplicity of the, the lighting. Yeah. And you see the vents that you have there? So those near a door would be an output. Whereas other ones against a near wall will be an intake. We've got our flooring sitting on this framework and all your infrastructure is in the floor. Cabling, pipes, ventilation units. 
So there's a ventilation unit in the floor. So it gathers the air under the floor. In there we have the ventilation shafts or pipes that eject the hot or the cold air. And we have other intakes, like those over there, that would be an intake along here. And the nice little thing is that some of these still have the mechanism. In there, there's a little vein, so you can control the amount of air coming out. So you could just take a screwdriver and adjust it. So this is a typical bathroom. Very practical, you know, you can have somebody taking a bath and somebody else using the, the uh, wash basin. Just look at some of these handles, just high quality. But the place wasn't built, you know, extravagantly. It was just built with a lot of thought. Very thoughtful process. Here's another typical bedroom. And now you're getting the port. I've seen people put cushions here, read a book. I mean, it, especially in wintertime, can you imagine how nice and comfy that feeling that is, you know? So each unit had a terrace, or just some? Do all? Uh, each unit has a terrace. We have some where it's not a private terrace, mm -hmm. but uh, those are studios. But everyone has at least one terrace. So you see where you see that huge um, solarium up there? Mm -hmm. So you have one module that's behind that solarium. The second module is lower. The one that you're seeing, the narrower one without a window. And it's one of its terraces is on the left there with the umbrella. Down there you have a, um, a public terrace. It's obviously the rooftop of the units that you can see below it. Look at all the open spaces. That was intentional. There are, there are views onto other things. So this was part of the expo as well. It, it was, was a theme pavilion. What was the theme? Man and his world. So this is a new way for us to live. In a lot of his material, he, he talks about three dimensions, talks about what's good for mankind. In this case, quality of life is not related to how big your lot of land is, but on the real quality yeah. of what you are experiencing, it can be space, but also how you build. And how you use that space. And how you use it. Yeah, you could have had a lot more density if all of this was kind of like all built one on top of the other, but there's a cost to that because you don't get the revenue from the rental or whatever, but you get the quality of, of your life here, like being able to do your gardens, you know? It's, uh, there's, there's the, I guess you put a value in, if you're a developer, this is not good for you. If you're living here, this is great for you. As a developer, you're not maximizing the square footage of land that you have. But as a human being, the space that you have is much more valuable to you. This is much more valuable than having some condo on, just look at them. Today we're living with a glass wall. That's all, that's all you see in, in, in new construction. My wife and I, for us, it was a natural thing to want to live here. We didn't want to be stuck in traffic jams and commuting because my wife lived in the suburbs. It was bad then, it would be, it's just awful, god awful now. So we, my wife and I could leave work. We have a shuttle bus that takes us here from downtown, but we could take uh, public transportation. We could also walk, which we did many times. And then there were some years when they were offering a water taxi. See where you see those um, blue and white tents? We used to take a little taxi for $5. So now we're in the kitchen dining room area. There's a typical ki kitchen with the uh, laminate. This is original. And some people who've done extensive renovations really like these. Just some of the extra detail. Just look at the aluminum trim. This is really sought after at Habitat. This is a Habitat look. So this is a new fridge. Originally when it was built, you had a fridge that had a, what do you call these fancy panels there to cover the, the front. So this would have been a broom cabinet, you know. This is the original stove, still works. So, you know, when you look at some of the new homes being built today, you know, with the islands and the huge kitchens, these, my term for them is a galley kitchen. They're more limited, but very functional. When my wife and I um, renovated our kitchen, we kept exactly the same footprint. We thought it was very, very, very well designed. So uh, we're talking about quality of materials. We've taken some of these old doors and uh, we've actually used them as bookshelves. Like there's no way they're gonna bend on us, you know? So 
now we have the module this way. We have a similar concept to what we have over there with the umbrella. So the module starts and ends where? Well, over here and then goes to that corner window. And then the other one where we were at a few minutes ago is above where we sat the bedrooms, okay. the bathroom. And it's going this way okay. from the port to the river. They're always crisscrossed. Uh, no. But the concept of crisscrossing is a pretty common it's one. Pretty common. When my wife and I moved in here, 1978, we were paying $525 Canadian. So it wasn't expensive, was it? But to build, was it expensive? Oh, I mean, everything had everything was new. Everything was a new concept, right? They had to, to design things. There was a manufacturer. Where we were looking out, we were on that terrace just a few minutes ago. Where, that was the that was the plant. That was the manufacturing plant for the modules. Okay. So it's natural that. If you're doing something new from scratch, it's a prototype. It's, and that's what Moshe has said on, on various interviews, that uh, had he been able, had he been allowed to continue to do more, it, the process would have improved, the cost would have gone down. And we have our terraces here that we saw a few minutes ago. There's the repetition. It's an active port. So we have, we have container ships coming in. Okay. That's, that's why it's lo lovely living here. We have entertainment, you know. You never know what ship is going to come in. Every single cutout is different. Yeah, there's well, that's there's a lot of repetition. Don't forget, they give there's repetition. There's repetition. But uh, at the same time, you might see one form of a module here, but the specs for it used someplace else will be different because of where it fits in the puzzle. It's not supporting the same weight. Oh. You know, we were talking about the in and outs on the inside of the walls and the yeah, concrete being yeah. thicker. So you've got, the module is built for where it is. It's got to support all this stress. Do you remember those, those pictures of all those bridges? Yeah. In the, yeah. while well, you're looking at the side of a bridge. So remember we were, we were looking at the, I told you two segments. Mm -hmm. This is a part of the bridge. It's the one U. So we're looking at the back end of one U. So in here, we've got all of our piping, electricals, all this other stuff. Okay. So here you've got another view onto our plaza. This area is the most um, claustrophobic or the most uh, <laughs> darkest. Okay. And here, you see the bridges. So you see there's a segment where the little the zigzag is uh -huh. there. So when we were, a few minutes ago, we were, we were seeing one side of the U. Here, you're seeing the other side of the U. And a bridge is made up of two, three, or four sections, segments, whatever. Mm -hmm. Down there, you have a public terrace. I'll have, draw your attention to the skylights, because those skylights light up stairs. And if you go up just a few steps here, you'll okay. be able to see how the skylight is used to light up the For me, this is such a Montreal thing. We have lots of stairs, which is very Montreal. Mm -hmm. And exterior stairs at that. Go over here, we'll show you some. Wait, why are there so many buildings? Look, that's the city center. For many, many years, people in the city thought we were in no man's land. Really? Yeah, because where was the nearest grocery store? And where was the, the you know, was, we weren't in civilization. Civilization is over there, and paradise is here. <laughs> so, you want to see the surfers? Oh, yeah, there's surfers down there. Look, it's a perfect wave. Oh, wave going down. Oh, we lost, we lost it. Given your wisdom, you can actually do this. Yeah, it's What's changed is that people don't view this place as being in no man's land. So we're going to uh, go through the plaza. I'm going to take him to the gardens. One of the jewels in the crown. People who own here 
our shareholders in the company. Who sold vos casquettes? The company is a limited partnership, and the limited partnership owns the building like a landlord. So we are owners of shares, and at the same time we are tenants of ourselves because we're shareholders. So that's it's a legal a legal way for us to own the buildings because at the time when we bought it we couldn't convert it to a condo they weren't allowing it you know these little flies that you're seeing uh, yeah. seeing they're uh, shad flies we have them all along the st lawrence and it's a good sign because it's a sign that the river is less polluted so they're harmless they don't bite they're food for the birds and they're a sign that our st lawrence river is uh, in good state so our play, we playground for the kids, when you came in you saw our tennis courts. You know, was, when we bought the building, we were concerned that people would fight about who, you know, if anybody should pay more. At that time, penthouse meant higher price, but we didn't get into the battle at all because the people who were by the river loved the sound. And the, the, the climate is different because you're on the east side, you don't get all of the winds you get on the north, northwest side. So everybody just loved what they had. And you know, you talk to these people and there's nothing better than their place. So they're, you know, not only do people choose habitat, but they choose their spot in habitat. You know, everything is different. And when you go through, like you can see that beautiful tree just through that slit. It's these, these little porches as we walk through that really make it special. Because with the activity we have, you know, one time you can look out a particular into a portrait, you see one thing, and the next day you see something else. See something else, right? <laughs> yeah. Tell me where else you've seen a place like this. Yeah. This is paradise, isn't it? It's really special. I often hear the word Zen. You know, when people come and visit, they say this place is really Zen. So it's, uh, no, it's just a great place. It's good for the soul. And we have our ducks. I think that one's been given a name. I think he's been called Anthony. Do you think this could be replicated? Should be replicated? I mean, ideas taken from it, if it was the idea... Well, was selfishly, I'd say no, I don't want it. I want it to be unique. But uh, I've... I've said to various people in Moisha's office that uh, I just wish, you know, it could be.